So we have the simplest possible temporal difference method, right? The simplest possible TD method is essentially you start off with some state ST, right? Take an action AT, and then you get to a state ST plus one, and along the way you get a reward RT plus one, right? Just using these four quantities, you can define a, 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 a TD update. So that basically looks something like this, right? So yeah, put this back again, ST. Uh, AT, AST plus one, and we get that. Uh, so basically, that's um, basically that's all the quantities you use. In fact, if you're going to update the value function alone, I don't even use the action, right? I just use the uh, current state, next state, and the reward. So these are all the random variables and these are the actual values of these variables. When I'm actually plugging them into the update, I'll use the actual reward that I got at time t plus 1, the actual state I saw at time t plus 1 and so on and so forth. And what I have written here are the random variables corresponding to uh, the state at time t and t plus 1 and the action at time t and the reward at time t. Okay. Excellent. So this is essentially the simplest TD update and we will see how we come to this uh, 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 in a bit. Right? So like I mentioned way in the beginning, uh, the temporal difference uh, learning is actually a very simple rule, uh, but potentially can explain very complex behaviors. Uh, and um, so the intuition is that the prediction of the outcome, the outcome here, sorry, the outcome here is the uh, expected return, uh, right, uh, uh, at state t, right. So notice this, right, so what is the this is an estimate of V of S T, correct? So at time T, I take an action, I get a reward R T plus 1 and then I go to the next state S T plus 1 and then I do V of S T plus 1 from that, right? So this essentially is an estimate of V of S T, right? So we have spoken about this earlier and just reiterating this. This is an estimate of V of S T, but at time T plus 1 because I need to know the estimate of, uh, uh, I need to know what ST plus 1 is and RT plus 1 is. So I should have moved forward. Okay. I should have gone to time T plus 1. Now I am looking back at time T and saying, hey, what, what is the prediction that of, of the reward, right? Return at time T that I can make when I am at time T plus 1, right? So this is VST but at time T plus 1. And this guy is VST, right? This is VST at Time t, right? At, when I reach the state st, I already have some notion of what should be the return, right? So that is basically what vst. So at time t, vst is the prediction that I will make for what is the return, uh, expected return starting from state uh, st, right? And at time t plus 1, rt plus 1 plus gamma vst plus 1 is the prediction that I will make for what is the return starting from st, okay? So that is why this is temporal difference error, right? So this is the prediction, again, both are of the same quantity, both are prediction of V of ST, but this is the prediction of V of ST at time T plus 1, and this is the prediction of V of ST at time T. So I take the difference, and that is what is called as the, it's called as the TD, okay? this is called as a TD error or temporal difference error, sometimes denoted by the symbol delta. Right. So uh, take the TD error delta, right, and then I, I, you know, like we normally do with our uh, you know, uh, stochastic updating rules, and make move move a small direction alpha, right, uh, a small step alpha in the direction of this TD error, so as to correct my estimate of V of ST. Right. So that's basically uh, the idea behind this uh, uh, TD matrix. Right. So the prediction at time t plus one uh, uh, is prediction at time t plus one is better than the prediction at time t. Hence, I use the difference right, uh, to uh, to correct the uh, earlier prediction. So again, reiterating this. Uh, so TD methods, like Monte Carlo methods, right, do not require a model. Right? Either it can work with, do not require a complete model. Right? Do not require a full model of the system. Right? Uh, and uh, it can work only with the experience, real experience, or it can work with a sample model. Right? just like Monte Carlo. So that is one nice thing. 
And the other thing is, uh, TD methods can be fully incremental. Right? You can bootstrap and you can learn. Right? The thing is, you can learn before knowing the final outcome. As long as you have uh, you know, reasonable estimates for the value functions along the way, you don't have to wait till the final outcome. So this also gives you a bunch of other things. Right? So because you're updating one step or each, each state along the way as you are going, right? uh, you don't require to store the entire trajectory like you would require in the case of uh, uh, Monte Carlo. And the trajectory can be very long. Suppose it's like 10,000 steps long, then there's a lot of things that you have to store. Right? That's what you require. Less memory right? and less peak computation. So what do we mean by less peak computation? So when you're doing the updation, you're only updating one state at a time. Uh, but uh, you know, if you're doing Monte Carlo, you'll be updating all the thousand states you, uh, uh, you, you reset. Them, right? But given this modern era of all this batch updating and stuff like that, so even if you are doing things uh, in, a, in a fully incremental fashion like uh, TD allows you to, uh, you end up doing some kind of a batch update anyway, because uh, uh, counterintuitively, uh, if you increase the volume of peak computation, you can be more efficient in doing the computation nowadays, right? With neural networks. So this is a trade-off, uh, you know, that's become more complicated uh, with the uh, with the improvement in uh, technology. So you have to figure out. That. So for the time being, just 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 remember this. These are simple stuff. To think about uh, before you think about. Uh, Huge amounts of code optimization. Right? And in fact, uh, 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 TD methods have a nice advantage. Right? You can actually learn even without the final outcome. Right? Somebody tells you, okay, here is a, uh, you know, uh, you start start playing this game and then uh, halfway through you abort the game, right? You don't actually go till the end to find out who won or who lost the game. Uh, you can still, uh, you know, get some useful learning. Out of it. So you could. If it, I mean, as long as you have already played the game before and you have some amount of uh, reasonable estimates for the value function, even if I give you this kind of a partial uh, game, right, I can still update the values of the states that I haven't seen before by bootstrapping from values of the states I have already seen. Right? So this allows me to learn even without the final outcome. And it turns out uh, there are many instances where this is very important, especially in, in, in places where you, you are physically or through policy or other things limited from accessing the full outcome. So, so for example, I might be looking at some kind of uh, loan repayment behavior. And I might be allowed to access only three or four months of the uh, customer's uh, behavior and not the entire behavior for some of the customers. Right? In such cases, I should be able to bootstrap with whatever I have learned from uh, uh, other data in order to Make estimates for what should what will be the value function in this particular uh, customer space. So, TD methods can combine the advantages of dynamic programming and meta programming. So again, let's look at the simplest possible uh, 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 TD prediction uh, algorithm. Right? So remember, what is a TD prediction or the evaluation? Uh, so prediction, or sometimes called the evaluation task, right? is essentially given pi, right? Find e pi or Pi, right, so so just given a policy pi, find the uh, uh, the value function uh, uh, corresponding to the policy pi, uh, uh, right? Is the v pi or the q pi? Right? So that's basically what we are looking at. Right? So it's called the prediction problem, like we mentioned earlier. So the policy evaluation. And what is the thing that we are assuming? We we assume that we don't know p of s prime comma r given s comma a, right? So we don't know that. So we don't know the expected reward expectations. We don't know the transition probabilities or anything. But we have access to real system or a sample model. Right. So this is something that we already said yesterday. Right? So now, what we are going to assume is that our interaction with the sample model or with the system is going to proceed in in, in this step. Right. There will be some state st. You take an action et. Right. You get a reward rt plus one. Then you go to state st plus one. Right? And then you take action AT plus 1, get reward RT plus 2, go to state ST plus 2, and so on. So, on. so that's basically uh, what we uh, uh, assume is going to happen. Right? So now, having experienced this, right? having experienced this, I'm going to do the following. Right? So I'm going to have VK ST plus 1, which is my current estimate for uh, the, uh, at the kth iteration. Right? I've taken the uh, taken k steps of updates. Right? Uh, at the kth update, uh, my my value function is vk of st. Right? Then what I'm going to do is, like we said earlier, I'm going to form right a prediction of what will be vk of 
t right at time t plus 1 so after i have gotten to see what is st plus 1 right so this is my new improved estimate of vk of st or v of st right this is my new improved estimate of v of st and this is my old estimate of v of st so new estimate minus old estimate gives me the uh, error right and now what i'm going to do i'm taking some alpha times that and i'm adding it to the old estimate <coughs> In some sense, if you think about it, right? So what I really wanted to do, if you if you if you remember, is to take the. So if you remember, uh, my v pi, right, is the expected value under pi of r t plus one plus gamma times v pi is t plus one, right? That's the expected value. That's I'm going to take, right? So. I basically, if I if I don't have the distributions, I have to take many many different samples of this expect of this quantity, right? I have to take many samples of this quantity and take the average of that. Right? And we already saw in the bandit case how you can take the average, right? So you can you know take the new sample minus the old average and then add it to the old average uh, uh, by multiplying with some constant alpha or something, and that will give you an estimate of the new average. So this R t plus one, so this small R t plus one is a specific instance of this uh, reward at time t plus one, plus gamma times v pi of s t plus one. Right. So 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 v pi. So so basically, whatever is the best estimate I have of v pi of s t plus one is v k. Right. I take v k of s t plus one. And how am I ensuring that uh, this is happening? Uh, the average is true. See, I, see, I'm taking an average, right? I want to get the expectation, but I'm taking only an average. How am I uh, assuming uh, the average is a true estimate of expectation? Because I'm selecting actions according to policy phi. So the actions I pick, right, will be according to policy phi, and the transitions that I will be making is according to the actually underlying MDP. I don't have access to it, but I'm confined by that MDP, right? Because I am acting in a world modeled by that MDP. Therefore, the transitions will come according to that MDP's dynamic. So if I'm playing tic tac toe and I have some rules for moving things around, or if I'm, or if I'm in a grid world and if there's some probability of 0.9 of going up whenever I do the up action, right? So that is that is exactly the sampling that's going to happen, right? Whenever I move the up, pick up up action, so nine uh, times out of ten I'll find the state above me, and you know one out of ten times I'll be in one of the other uh, three neighboring states. Right? So that's how that's how this thing will work. Right? So I'm taking this sample. By behaving according to the policy phi, that's very important here. So I behave according to policy phi, and I get the sample. And so now this is the new sample minus the old uh, uh, average, right? Uh, added to the new old average, I get my new average. So which is basically the new uh, value for the epoch. So this is the simplest TD method. So we call it TD zero, right? Why it is called TD zero? I'll explain uh, uh, later, right? So when we look at a, a more expanded uh, uh, Universe of uh, TD algorithms, right? Where uh, the notion of bootstrapping becomes more rich. Right now, we looked at either you know, go all the way to the end or uh, till you get to the terminal state, which is what Monte Carlo is, or exhaustive searches, or you only do one step look ahead, which is what dynamic programming or the simple TD zero method is. Uh, but then you can bootstrap somewhere in between also. In software, you just one step look ahead, you could do two steps, three steps, four steps. So when we start looking at that setting. I uh, will explain to you what TD0 means. Okay, for the time being, just assume that this algorithm is called TD0. Okay? So it is very simple. So you generate these trajectories, you have some estimate for uh, your uh, V phi to start with, you generate trajectories according to phi, okay? and then you go back and uh, 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 keep updating the value function uh, as and when you see each transition. Okay? So that is basically the, the simplest uh, TD0 algorithm. So let us say, take a simple example. So, how this will work. Uh, let's say that I start off with uh, my V A is uh, 0.5, and my V B is 0.8, right? And then uh, uh, I'm going to have uh, right uh, the reward for going from A to B. This is what is here. The reward for going from A to B is zero. There is no reward actually. The reward is zero, and I have my alpha, which is my step size, right? I have my alpha is 0.2. And my gamma, which is my discount factor, is 0 0.9. So I've gone from A through some action, right? So let's say I took some action from A. I don't really care what action I took, as long as it's an action according to 
by policy pi, right? So I took an action according to policy pi. So I went from a to b and I got a reward of 0. So what will happen now? So I'll have to update my value of a, right, by using this equation. So alpha times r plus gamma times vb minus va is basically what the update, right? So what is va? Originally va is 0.5, so I plug that 0.5 in. So alpha is 0.2. R the transition reward I got is 0, right, plus gamma 0 0.9 times Vb, which is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.5. So this is gone. So I need to look at this, right? 0 0.9 times 0 0.8 minus 0 0.5, right? Uh, and then add a small fraction, alpha times that to this. So basically I end up with uh, 0 0.544 as my new estimate for value of A. Yeah. Okay. So this is how the TD update will look. So what we will see next is how Monte Carlo right, and TD will treat the same set of updates. Right? So we will come to that in the next one.